Now for hepatitis. This condition refers to inflammation of the liver, commonly caused by a viral infection. And non-viral causes are typically caused by alcohol and even autoimmune diseases, where the body attacks itself. Now there's five different types of hepatitis, A, B, C, D, and E. But really the most tested here are B and C, so I bolded them here. So starting at the top, type A is transmitted by fecal oral route, typically through contaminated food. And B and C are typically transmitted from blood and body fluids. Now D is a co-infection with type B, and E is the fecal oral route, typically contracted from contaminated drinking water. So the memory tricks to know for exams is A, think anus to mouth, for hepatitis B and C, just think blood cultures, as well as sex. And E, just think E. coli is in the water, from drinking contaminated water. Now in terms of causes and risk factors, for B, C, and D, we have blood and body fluids. So IV drug use, as well as tattoos, or even body piercings. And even sharing razors or unprotected sex. So a common NCLEX question talks about modes of transmission for hepatitis C. Select all that apply. So just think, hepatitis B and C is from blood cultures, B and C, as well as body fluids. So option number one, blood is correct. Option two and three are incorrect here. Remember, we're looking for blood and body fluids. And option four and five, semen and vaginal secretions, Yes, that is correct for hepatitis C. Now, in terms of signs and symptoms, when caused by a virus, which is the most common, we see flu-like symptoms. So we see a headache, fever, fatigue, also called malaise, as well as nausea and vomiting. And a key term here is elevated liver enzymes, because in hepatitis, we just have inflammation of the liver. So naturally, you will see an elevation in liver enzymes with elevated ALT and AST, and elevated bilirubin. Now, normal for any liver disease, we see common signs, like itchy, also called pruritus, from bile salts that build up under the skin. Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from simplenursing.com. Did you get your beautifully handcrafted study guide bundle yet? It highlights the key points and memory tricks in this video. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, all neatly organized in the playlist, along with thousands of practice questions written by actual NCLEX writers. So don't be scared, be prepared. Try it free today. Visit simplenursing.com. We get that elevated bilirubin, as mentioned before, so we'll see jaundice, basically that yellowing of the skin and the eyes. We'll also have colored urine, as well as clay-colored stools, typically described as pale stools from all that bilirubin spilling over into the bowels. We'll also see elevated PT and APTT that leads to bruising from the lack of coagulation factors, as well as low albumin. So we see edema since albumin is not there to attract the water back into the blood vessels. So Sonder mentions, the nurse is teaching the client with viral hepatitis. This disease is characterized by which specific assessment finding? Select all that apply. So, jaundice, clayed color stools, elevated bilirubin levels, as well as dark or tea-colored urine. Now, all these signs are from that elevated bilirubin that spills over into the bloodstream, making the entire body yellow. So, this is typical for any client with liver disease, specifically with cirrhosis as well. And we go into way more detail in that video. Now for a top missed NCLEX question about hepatitis. A client is admitted with hepatitis and complains of constant itching. Which intervention would the nurse recommend? So option one, applying a moisturizer. Option two, avoiding the sun, yes. And option three, applying a cold press, yes. And option four, applying a hot pad. No, we want to avoid the hot pads and choose the cold. So option one, two, and three are the correct ones here. So itching is a very common complaint after hepatitis. So it's best treated with a cold press, moisturizers, as well as staying out of the heat. Now in terms of diagnostics, 
the antigens are not highly tested, so I recommend not focusing on that too much. But a liver biopsy is tested, specifically after the procedure. We teach clients to lay on the right side, basically to lay on the liver, to prevent bleeding. So we always put pressure on anything that is bleeding. In that same way, we're putting pressure on the liver to prevent that bleeding. Now in terms of education, we do small frequent meals to prevent nausea. This includes low protein to all liver disease patients to decrease that ammonia level in the blood, which can lead to hepatic encephalopathy, that cloudy brain, which we cover in detail in the cirrhosis lectures. And we also teach low fat foods until the nausea subsides. Number two is frequent rest periods to boost the immune system when fighting the virus, if it was caused by a virus. Now option three is protected sex. Obviously, it depends on which type of hepatitis, specifically B and C. And option four and five, we're avoiding drinking alcohol, as well as acetaminophen, that Tylenol, since acetaminophen and alcohol are very harmful to the liver. And number five, we want to avoid sharing, key term, shaving razors, as well as toothbrushes. So, just think body fluids there. So, a common exam question talks about a client who has hepatitis. What advice should the nurse include regarding personal living? And the answer typically is, do not share personal care products. Now, Saunders had a question about diet. So the nurse should include which dietary plan to ensure optimal nutrition during the acute phase of hepatitis. Select all that apply. So consume multiple small meals throughout the day, allow the client to select foods that are most appealing, and eliminate fatty foods from the meal tray until the nausea subsides. So you see how those key words are worked in to the select all that apply questions. Now lastly, complications. For any client that has liver inflammation or liver disease, we can have acute liver failure. We can also have cirrhosis, where the liver becomes scarred, which we call scarrosis. We can also have liver cancer as well as gallbladder issues, as the inflammation of that liver can block bile flow from the gallbladder. Now treatments are not really mentioned on too many exams, but for hepatitis A, this typically resolves on its own with bed rest. And hepatitis B and C are usually treated with antiviral medications. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides.